<laughs> Waffle Top Podcast. My name is Paolo. We've got Donny with me, Hebs, the local resident, and we've got our guest today. <laughs> Just learning to introduce yourself. Gwenton Slowly, uh, director of Crying Sons, advisor to the Home Office and the government. Wow. Wow. Jeez. Okay. Right. Now I understand cool. why you didn't give me an intro. Yeah. Yeah. So it's mad because when I looked at obviously getting you on, we've seen what <laughs> work you've done in the community local okay. to where you're from, which. Uh, it's hackney in it yeah so um it's obviously the, this is the first time we've had a pol- like a pol- well call it a politician if you like oh, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i mean are you, are you don't like being called deaf i don't like being called a pol- nah, you know what it is i don't really deal with labels i'm a guy that whatever it is i'll tr- i'll try it and make sure that i do the best i can with what i'm doing and leave mm. that to someone else so if, if that's the label that I'm stuck with, then I'll rather <laughs> <than> <laughs> what, What's the <laughs> most common label that's frequently coming up as all, of recent? All sorts. I was uh, started off as gangs expert, home expert. office advisor. Next thing I was movie director, author. See and how I'm he's like, bragging on a yeah, low, no, in I'm a humbling way. Yeah. I leave that to other people. I don't <laughs> accept none of them. So to yeah. be honest, I kind of like the politicians. It's refreshing. So I, uh, yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay with that one. Because it's. I feel like I'm in a lane on my own mm. when I'm over there. And people are starting to understand the levels of what you're trying to do. Everything else that I've done in my life is always been like, oh, yeah, he's over there doing that. We're going to go try it. Mm. But when I decided that I'm going to go and run the free elections, it was like people were looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, we don't do that. <laughs> and that was what made me think, you know what, this is the lane for me. Because for everyone in the community to feel like you're not meant to be over there, yeah. then mm-hmm. I'm definitely going over there. No and reason. If you see what i done last month, a lot of people didn't even understand what that was. I could have gone for an MP. I could have gone for a councillor again. I ran for councillor in what, 2019 in in Lewisham, yeah, and 2021 in Lewisham, and then I said, no, let me end up. I go home. I could have ran for an MP there because that's the next level up. Mm. But I said, no, go for the top seat in the borough. Top seats, the mayor. There was no one else running that looked like me. Mm. you understand so the community didn't even understand what I was doing until it was finished because yeah. when it was finished they started where do we go and vote yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah, yeah. this should have been happening like well, last yeah, week it's you true, know it's true, it's true. but it's yeah true. it's it's good anyway at least people start to realise yeah. that we can do whatever we want for mm. people that obviously don't necessarily know that are watching this yeah. who you are when you was running for mayor like what given like the the issues that's happening in London at yeah. the moment. A lot of it being from assaults, like yeah. women assaults, not just knife crime, because I think mm. knife crime is always pinned on London, but there's a lot more going on, rape, assaults, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. etc. Like, which are massively high in London at the moment. I, think I was looking at some figures and like, I think in London, surprisingly, rape is higher than knife crime, mm. which people, it's not yeah. something l- that l- would... It's, it's something that is not publicised. Even... None when I was running in Hackney, it was the other independent party saying to me, do you know how much people get raped here in, in a week? And I'm like, what? It's mm. not on the news. You wouldn't think that. You wouldn't think that. So it, what you're saying is true. A lot of people are getting raped on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Sexual assault, there's people touching people on buses, public transport. Mm-hmm. You're coming out the shop, someone rubbing up against you. It's still classified as rape yeah. on a, a different grade. So mm. sometimes someone might do something to a female or a male that pinch a man's bum you think wait a minute if that was the other way around what would that be called 100%. so a lot of the time people don't even understand the definition of of what rape classifies yeah because it's at the moment i think as well like if you want to specifically talk about where you run for hackney yeah. i was looking and doing some like research on so a few things and uh obviously me i work in construction as well yeah. so i know a lot about properties yeah. and whatnot and i think hackney has like is one of the areas where at, at a point i think the crime rate was really high and mm. not just specifically to one crime but crime mm. and house prices were really high mm. so it's like anyone that was working class really um couldn't afford to live there but they were kind of stuck there because they can't afford to go anywhere else the poverty line yeah. was, so it's was like the real. poverty line yeah. well all of that is manufactured if you look at it they offer you 
yeah, we're going to mash the building down. We're going to move you across the road, just across the road. And once we build up these glass buildings with plastic yellow bits outside, cladding and whatever else, then you could come back. But by the time you're meant to move back, you can't afford the rent there because they call it uh, London living wage. For affordable who? rent. Yeah. It's not affordable. Yeah, it's, yeah. Unaffordable. it's called affordable yeah, rent. So affordable for who? If I'm on minimum wage, I can't afford that. So mm. I work I work in housing yeah. um, and there's a whole team of mine that they do what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So we, like Ellsbury Estate and all other estates, yeah. um, we're kind of responsible to rebuilding them and restructuring them. And they're restructured for so many reasons. So firstly, like some of these estates have been historically high in crime yeah, yeah. where like it's designed really poorly for even like for people to feel safe in that environment. So the whole layout structure wise never worked out. No one felt safe. But the little part, the loophole in, in the way London's moving is that no one's gonna afford living there, but no. they have to by law create at least 30 percent of it to be more affordable then they have to make money through like shared ownership yeah. private renting but i agree a lot of people are missold a dream <laughs> into thinking you're going to come back to the ends but eventually you can't even live in london even yeah. if you didn't move back to your home that you're promised just living anywhere in london is not affordable so you're not having to think about moving outside, outside. Of london is it is it regeneration or gentrification which one this this was gentrified. I mean, the regeneration is in a yeah. sense of when they rebuild it. So mm. I go for a lot of meetings, and they're they're built much more beautiful. Like there's basketball courts, yeah, yeah. there's areas where kids can actually play because there's no youth centres these days. So they're trying to create even safe paths where, like, if mm. there was an incident, how quickly can police get to the building? How quickly, that, yeah, yeah. you know, the closest GP is. So they have to think about all these intricate details. Mm. But the realities are, we're living in a country in a city that is moving at a fast pace yeah. as far as financially, like the inflation the other day. I'm like, ah, I don't know if I can afford my house anymore. But not literally, but it, it's getting to that point where everyone, even if you're comfortable, you're going to start feeling the burn. So people who are now being forced out and being told, oh, don't worry, soon come, you'll move back to your place. The reality is like, you're probably going to get an incentive to move out. But the way London's moving, do you want to stay in London? That's, that's where you grew up. Like where you was talking about like, to me earlier on in terms of the cost of prices in your area where Bri you are. Brixton, yeah. Like yeah, Brixton went from nothing to, to like... To now it's just... It's crazy. Brixton is different. Millions. It's tra changed a lot. I think the only people that benefit from that is the elders that already bought their properties. Yeah. So all of the elders that brought their properties in Brixton... For like £8,000. Yeah. When you look at the cost of those properties you think you know what i made the right choice mm -hmm. so all like the older generation that that was their goal we're gonna work to buy this house they're the only ones now benefiting from actually being in that area and it's the mm. same thing across london if you own your house before mm. they At started doing all of this regeneration stuff yeah. and it, it it come back down to this again if you're gonna vote in politicians that's gonna allow this to happen then you've got no right to complain and this is one of the narratives that I was trying to push to, to raise awareness is let's stop blaming the politicians. Let's stop blaming the government. Let's stop blaming the mayor. And I'm talking Sadiq Khan, not the local mayors. Because you have a chance to say no more. And a lot of people are so brainwashed where even in my house, I grew up in Hackney, there was no way we could talk about we're not voting for Diana. But you mad. Mm -hmm. No matter what Labour done on a broader scale, we are voting for Diane Abbott. So you go in most people's house, they got their religious figures mm. and then their MP. And that's how it rolls and nothing's changing. So as a young person growing up in that environment, automatically, you don't even know why you're voting for these people, but you've been internalized that this is what we're going to do. It's tradition, yeah, <laughs> pretty it, much. Yeah, it's like mm. your football team, your political mm. party and whatever religious group you believe in, if you believe in religion, but that's where change comes if you don't like what's happening they say no no more of this take a stand and, and this is why i sit back and i always see people complain about the government i'm like you don't got no right to do that you just voted them in but do you think like let's say your situation sorry do you mind me yeah. asking a question um <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> it's don't not off. my show no, sorry. um see if let's just say you were to successfully are you are you a mayor at the moment you're not a mayor. No, no, so no. if you were successfully become mayor do you not feel also your hands are tied to an extent because certain things are beyond you so you want to make a massive change and you want to be able to make things more affordable and you want to be able to invest pots to create youth centers whatever it is that your vision is but you also have setbacks and knockbacks by people who are above you uh, 
if I'm a part of the, the main parties, then yeah, then and your hands are tied. When you're independent, you've got scope to actually call out nonsense and demand transparency. Money is never an issue. Mm. And just like yourself, I started off moving people on witness protection. So I understand about the whole housing background and the surplus that is there for each housing association and everything else. And you're meant to be giving back money to buy land and all of that stuff. Every year, the police uh, confiscate money from drug dealers and criminals in the millions. Mm. Yeah, In the last, let's say, two years, there was a thing called IncroChat where these silly drug dealers and gangsters yeah, yeah, yeah. were using these encrypted phones, believing that some system... Uh, it was just backwards. That's, whole, how, that's how nines got arrested. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but yeah. the yeah. whole thing yeah. is backwards. Mm. If if you've grown up in a times like myself and seeing things progress, why would you then go all the way back mm. to start doing all sorts of wild stuff on a mobile phone? Within that operation, it was an international operation, the amount of money in uh, Forest Hill, they found a man with 53 million in his Jeez. house under his bed. One man. My days. 53 million. So let's say then we were the police. We could say to the NCS, you know what? I'll give you 53 million. Just give me the back door of all of them phones. Mm. What phone company isn't going to take 53 million up front? So that one raid on that man has mm. paid for the whole operation. Mm. So everything else that you recover from all of these echelon drug dealers that have never been to jail before, mm. and most of these rappers that were pretending that music were making them money, are still on bail for incro cha uh, charges. Mm. Yeah, That's why you see some of them looking depressed, because they're still on bail. There are people in jail on murder charges for planning murders from jail on those phones yeah, I'm not the, about that. yeah that the amount difference. of millions that the government got back on that that's called proceeds of crimes act money the pocket fund they call it when you go to places like dorset they reinvest that back into the community in london and other places they give it to the police to kick people's doors off or drive around the big vans all night long and I'm saying, let's stop pretending that we haven't got money and reinvest the money mm. back into the community, back mm. into housing, rent deposit scheme for people that can't afford it. So I never believe in all of that antics is that it's not as sweet as it looks in there. You all have to toe the party line. So if the guy at the front or the lady at the front says, Don't you move that way we're going to do, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do X, even though you know that it's not beneficial to anyone, you can't call it out. Yeah, and that's why you see when a lot of MPs start calling things out, the next thing they're silenced or they're banished. You're no longer <laughs> allowed. Well, because because you, be you think are you are you guys? Because like I said, you probably want to make massive yeah. change, but then to an extent, people say, but they're just puppet on strings. Yeah, because you're the face of the of the brand, yeah. but behind you are a lot of other people who are carrying possibly more weight. But you're saying as an independent person, that's not the case. It's it's not the case. You still have to follow the guidance. Mm. But you've got more room to manoeuvre. If you see something you don't like, you could call it out. Like, we're running an election. I could go and say, oh, yeah, they're liars. The other party won't say that. They're too scared to. Yeah, they will diplomatically say oh, what they're saying is not correct. I do not agree with this yeah, point. <laughs> you understand what? <laughs> I'm not going to be spanked if I call that nonsense. And when we come back down to the cost of each murder again. Yeah. It's 3.2 million. Before it was 1.8. It's now gone up to 3.2 million. What does million. that mean? What does that... What is? Can you say that every single person that gets murdered, so this is an instant budget that's set? Someone dies today anywhere in London, a red button gets pressed. Mm. And whether it's the CPS fund, legal aid, uh, the autopsy, forensic, cell site, all of the stuff that needs to come in, specialist... You got you, your team might not agree with the CPS's findings on yeah. the cell site. You then get your specialist to come and analyze the data. Mm. <clears throat> and all of that comes out of the same pot of money. Mm. If there's then a retrial, that starts again. So when we're seeing in certain boroughs where they've got eight, nine murders, times that yeah. by the original cost. And then we will see that local authority have got money. And also when people get in prison, the local authority still pays for them when they're in prison yeah like if you're if you're I'm, i've learned this from being in the housing yeah. that your ha your housing benefit continues for yeah. a whole year that you while you're detained yeah. or whatever like they can't evict you they can't yeah. do whatever there's and certain also, protection if, yeah if, like when we were moving people on witness protection they flee their original house but keep it 
and then we do something called dual housing benefits mm -hmm. where they get housing benefits on both properties yeah so the new one and the old one mm. yeah, for yeah, i yeah, think okay. up to yeah, six yeah, months right. so because but the point the being there's that. enough money to, yeah, to, to so when we hear that oh there's not enough money to go to war and fly over one of them tanks sell the tank yeah. and give it to a local authority that's struggling places like croydon that's gone bankrupt one of that's those wild yeah. still i still can't get like <laughs> can <laughs> i just say the fact that they stopped westfield as a result i think it's mind-blowing because because westfield would have been a great income yeah to help but there's, there's more there's more politics behind that that we might never know who True. owns those buildings there's a lot world. of international see, see what yeah. see that i think the other big problem we have and I don't know if you might know him actually. Yeah. Uh, well, our friend Verrill, he does a homeless charity. Listen, Verrill, I've been meaning because, funny enough, I do interviews myself, yeah. and Verrill take my hat off to him. Yeah, mm. he's been saying to me to come and interview him for ages. Yeah, what he's doing is amazing. I will tell you one thing that I like about Verrill: his heart's clean. Yeah, mm. and we see some people that do things for the community yeah. to feed their own ego or mm. fill a void. Mm. So a lot of them. They're running away from something, and this helping the community thing is filling the void or replacing the madness that they're running away from. And if you just watch, you'll see that they carry the same behaviors into saving the community that they had before they started saving the community. And people like Verrill, he's a humble guy, family man, goes out there and helps people that the government should be helping. Yeah, mm. let's be yeah. honest, because. 100%. Even even when I was running uh, the election recently, we had a lady living on the town hall. Mm -mm. That's that's madness. The woman's homeless mm. on the steps of the town hall. Yeah, and we're talking about oh we're gonna provide hotels and homes for mm. everyone else, but we've got our own residents sleeping on the steps of See, the town hall. This this is my thing, and this, so I have to be careful how I say this because without sounding. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not that I don't understand what people are going through, but so obviously this scheme that's come in where we we actually was able to house like the fleeing Ukrainians come over from Russia. Did you hear about the affair? Um, yeah, hang on, that boy. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> mad. He's, but he shouldn't have picked someone that looked like. <laughs> his wife. Do you know what I mean? No, but he um. <laughs> so sorry, sorry. so what they've reported happening now mm. is basically. Uh, say that the uh, people that come over are not getting on with the, their sponsors, if you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen that. They are being kicked out of the house and they're still claiming the three hundred pound or three thirty, how much That's they get wild. paid a month. You're now result of this. You've got homeless Ukrainians mm. now increasing the already growing homeless problem we have. Uh, let's let's talk about London for example, because we're in London. I mean, what it, nationally the homeless situation is a joke. You go to like really really uh what's the word i'm looking for poverty stricken areas like blackpool and all these places mm. and you'll see it there but a lot of it that comes that comes into sort of drug addiction and yeah. what people's mental and their problems that they have there they have different environmental yeah. issues yeah, around even, them even if we look at the whole ukrainian issue there's hotels that are struggling yeah. bnbs that are struggling the government could have made a deal with them and said look here you go here's, money. Here, here's a pot of money house these families so instead I'm, I'm, of putting yeah. the pressure on, on normal citizens mm. you don't know who's coming in your house i would like but to not just that someone. but some people might take advantage and abuse that and go okay. all right cool this is a money making opportunity like people who, people who foster Which children some people yeah. for yeah. money as already. opposed to for the yeah. love of yeah. children it's true. And, and, and the thing is that. as well the way that they're bringing uh children over for example because mm. there's children coming over like, on their own or not on their own but with obviously supervision yeah, from the army yeah. until they go workers, to yeah. government but Here's the thing. What background, like, have they specified and set out what background checks they're doing on I'm the sure people? I'm sure they're doing background checks. Yeah, they but I'm to. saying that... What, are people coming over? Or people in, the house terms of, in terms of the, the speed that it's happening, um, for example, like, for example, how long does it take if you wanted to adopt a kid? But I think I think it's fairly different because I think similar to the COVID reaction where suddenly there's like a million staff members doing COVID yeah. tests, they'll recruit people quickly to go out to these homes and do their due diligence I don't know is that, that what happens because on lbc i thought you meet someone on twitter 
you both get along and then you then apply for them. I didn't know that. No, you, you can reach visit. out. So you go to okay. you go to the government website. Yeah. You apply that you'd like to offer Bring your home, over, yeah. and then it goes from there. So there'll be a whole like checking because you can't. Like, what if you're a paedophile? What mm. if you're um yeah, you got right, a, a criminal record? They have to yeah. do certain checks by default. But how thorough they are, we'll only yeah. ever know. But you guys are speaking about this, and I think my biggest issue is if we have a pot. For, I mean, and I think everyone outside who's struggling deserves to get help from the rest of the world. 100%. And I'm not disputing that one bit. But if we have enough pot to go out and go, do you know what? We're going to do a scheme for Afghan families, which I'm working on at the moment. I'm dealing yeah. with Afghan families and rehoming them. And the government haven't given us money to help fund for homes. So one of the jets. The, do you know how much them jets cost? That's what I'm saying. So stop, send, stop one of them going over there. Sell it to a country that needs it. And there's loads of land on the motorway get them some container houses that could go up quick and the people them could have houses those hospitals that they had for the covid patients that no one used yeah send some people in there some builders you know about the and convert into industry. flats and that could be done like within a couple of weeks the same way they built it quickly the same way they can here's, convert it here's the problem and I, I can tell you this now for mm. example if you go back to like property for example here um where they're, they're actually, where they reported before, yeah, for example, that there wasn't enough housing for this and that, mm. um, it's so wrong because I can tell you now, I think the other day I was looking at a project and Walthamstow had a load of apartments built. They've actually they're built vacant. half of them. They're knocking them all down now. Why? Because there was a fault default with something underneath Some defect, the ground. Yeah. yeah, defect. They've yeah. knocked all the buildings down. Bear in mind, they've built half of them already. And they've got just gone. Yeah just gone so the I money that would have been put into yeah. building them <coughs> i think a, a lot of that as well i've seen even i know these are the government schemes as well but, yeah. but that will come yeah. not, no, safety not, stuff just to explain yeah. that wouldn't come from the government that it's budget that re that yeah. respend is the l on the on the actual yeah, contractor yeah, yeah. and, yeah, yeah. and the, the people who are taking on to build the mm. building so whether it's barclays whoever it is who's chosen to build it yeah. that's that's taken under their own, insur own insurance because it's their fault yeah. mm. so it wouldn't be a government double spend it will be someone else taking it off yeah. of that, unless the government are saying enough to go, oh, no, please, take more money. But yeah. I was saying this point to say, sorry, yeah. without interjecting too much. Um, if we have money and budgets and pockets for different areas of different parts of the world, then surely we have enough to do the small things to help the community. So not to digress too much, but my biggest fear at the moment, as you guys both know, is raising my young boy in, like, as I say, my young king in the UK, like London to me is home it's all I know but there's no youth centres there's nothing to do there's nothing like and there's so many male mentors that are trying to mm. overcompensate and fight for mm. these children but if we have enough budgets to do all these structural stuff and gentrification and, and helping families from abroad then surely we should be able to start building a community again before before you answer that as well from when you've grown up like with youth centres mm. now what do you see like because it's got worse there's I feel no, like youth centres has gone like back in the day it was so nice like you finished school or the weekend, like, yeah, you're going to see your friends in the youth centre. And now, there's nothing. It's just they have the streets now. Yeah, the streets. Outside of the yard. If it's not, I don't know, robbing people or riding, but just doing something wrong, it's like, there's nothing they can do no more. It's I think, just, and also the beauty of a youth centre is a lot of women were single mothers and are single mothers, mm. so they're having to work two, three shifts to mm. try and provide, and all they want to do mm. is ensure they're starting, they're allowing the child to have a great start off yeah. in life. So mm -hmm. being in a youth centre is a great babysitting opportunity for them because they have youth workers mm -hmm. how how perfect it was and how was whatever it's a different yeah, thing proper. but now these kids have too much time on their hand the mum's still working overtime mm. but now she thinks she's providing and he's thinking i'm gonna provide for her and he gets caught up in a little techie situation and here we are and it's just like surely this can't keep happening unless the mm. government want this to happen for any other political reason because i don't want to raise my child anymore so i thought uk is the best place my parents uprooted to come here and they made the best decision for that for mm. us. And I love London to bits. I can't, I was born and raised here. I can't picture myself initially being anywhere else. Mm. And now I feel like it's my duty mm. to uproot and go elsewhere because London's just deteriorating. It's crazy, man. It's it's so over crazy. to you, may it be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. A lot of questions there. Yeah, for, for me, if I'm being honest, it seems like a dark place and it could be a dark place, but there's many young people that make it out on scapes. And I think you need a proper support around young people these days. 100%. And you, young people need to have that respect and fear of someone. Because I'll give you an example. I got a 15 year old boy, he's six foot something. And the minute he became over six foot, 
he didn't know how to behave with that hype. Mm. And the, then you you got them in a school where they've got two or three rude boys in the school. And then the school's taking in some other young people that they have to take with special needs. They're already involved in gang activity. How do you then navigate your child away from that level mm -hmm. of excitement? That's my biggest fear. And, and also, <coughs> when, you're, when you're six foot something, people see you as intimidating, even if yeah. you're so innocent. Yeah. And then you start realizing, yeah. okay, cool, people see me intimidating, this could protect me. But yeah. then how far would the other, and, other and it's that things... And it's that excitement. As a, as a dad, I've had to change the way that a parent. So mm. it, at first I tried to do the old school parent, what my dad done, like, yo, don't do that, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realized like, not, yeah, what? Me. You're gonna talk to me like that? Do it then. Yeah, brave, brave. And then you got different levels of do it then. Do it then I call social services. Do it then I'm <laughs> gonna heard harm that. myself. Not with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now you're now worried, are you gonna harm yourself for real or are you just saying it? Mm. This is what a lot of parents are struggling with now. It's true. It's the minute true. they talk to their children too hard, the children like, you know what? That's it. I'm fed up. You're yeah. making me feel sad. I'm becoming anxious. And you're like, how do I parent you then if I can't even talk to you properly? Yeah. And then I realize, you know what? Swallow my pride, because mm. I've grown up different. My family raised me like a boy soldier. So warrior. I yeah. try to do <laughs> that with my son, yeah. and I've learned that. The environment <coughs> we're in, these youths want you to tell them, I love you, you know? Come here, give dad a hug. And I'm like, oh, I forget. I don't really like this sort of stuff here, it's but different though. if it's working for the youth, then no matter fine. how bad you're being, come here, give dad a hug. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. how I'm like on my son. Yeah, it's yeah. like that yeah. reprograms them because he's mm. wiling out. I'm like, come here, what are you doing? Give me a hug, man, behave yourself. Don't worry about that. First start. And it's like, rah, dad loves me. Yeah, of course I love that, you. Cause, cause no matter what you do, yeah. I love you. And I realise that they're different to the way we grew up. They just want hugs. They <laughs> want you <laughs> to tell true. them, you know, what you've done there is good, you know. Yeah, you like that, dad. Yeah, I'm proud of you, you know. That's the things that they want that mm. we never got as children from our parents. So we didn't. But do you not think to an extent you yearned for it? Because I was raised on like beating the belt that yeah, works. Yeah, like, to me, I thought, <laughs> and I yeah, spoke yeah. about it on my own podcast. I had to go pick the thing to get Listen, yeah, was there. listen, listen there. you better pray. To, yeah, it's like, yeah. choose, choose <laughs> your item, the instrument of beating. It's like, listen, ah. So I thought by default, I will give my child licks. I was looking forward Yo. to it. I'm like, I'm going to raise children. I get to beat them. Yeah. But when my son was born, I realized, wait, we can change a narrative. Mm. And mm -hmm. it's like, not just because society's trying to desensitize and there are other like you said anxiety or yeah. the, the kids are more expressive because there's more exposure to yes. expression yeah. and there's a fine line of exaggerated expression and then yeah. there's true do you know what you've given me a safe space i can yeah. speak yeah. but i think we are lucky enough to change that narrative to go do you know what our parents gave us licks but we secretly wanted them to give us praises mm. or they never praised us they praised us behind our backs okay. or but through different ways but are you upset that you got licks back in the day Nah, I'm no. cool with it. I'm, I, 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 I love my dad for that. And my mum. My mum was worse than my dad. My like dad I had, was I had the, the slippers straight. to my mum. Yeah, was my cool. mom or any object nearby. Like, she wanted to kill me. Yeah, and I'm like, what's wrong with this woman? Yeah, she got she was different. Well. But then I realised because she was small, to her, she had to be more she vicious. She had to overcompensate. Because she wants you to know, don't think that I'm, I'm small. Like, she'll do stuff like, you do something now, She'll smile with you. See, as soon as you get in the house, Mad. you do one thing wrong. Oh, you remember what you done later? <laughs> what, what, you I was literally this. telling someone the other day, my mum gives me a look and goes like this. I yeah. forget about it. And when I come home, the yeah. pitch comes through. Goes, this is for embarrassing in front of people. And I'm like, Rod, you remember? remember yeah. We had a lot of happiness <laughs> in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah in between. Yeah. They don't care about the in between. They remember. They're, they're focused. Say, yeah. <laughs> when you get home, I got sat up for That's you. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, like like you, I well, I my each sibling yeah. received it differently. So my older brother hold yeah. a little resentment toward my dad. Mm. My sister felt some kind of way. Whereas for me, I forgave my parents because yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood that this is all they knew. I understood yeah. this was their environment. This was they they just literally yeah. inherited the idea of parenting because they had no other uh, no other place to look at. We can yeah. look at so many yeah. different environmental things to go. See, yeah. This don't run. I know my I know like my mum. My mum's parents were a lot more, uh, because of the way my granddad was, my granddad never needed, never hit like his kids, mm. uh, which would be my mum and her sisters, yeah. because my granddad was just respected. Like they just listened yeah. to him. Yeah. So he didn't need to do that. On my dad's side of my family, it's different. Obviously he, he grew up in Portugal. Um, my grandma was uh, Portuguese. My, my granddad, granddad 
was from Mo, uh, from Mozambique. So he come over and like the upbringing that my dad had there was like when I say like from what I was told militant vibes vicious beats yeah, yeah, like powerful. I mean it, to the point it's, like it, it, it scarred it, yeah. it, it might have scarred them like do you know what I mean but like that's what he grew yeah, up that on was, that was that was standard it's, it's it, to me standard. I love my dad to bits mm. and what I could see what the man was trying to do mm. and now I've got uh, my own son I'm like you know what I feel like I'm reliving your life because I feel the heartache and the worry when school's finished and I'm ringing your phone and I can't get through. Mm. And I'm like, is this what I used to do to my dad? Yeah. And I've had to apologise to him because it's like, yeah. I didn't know that's what I was putting you through. And sometimes as children... We're just carefree. We, yeah, mm. we, we don't see the effects or we just think, right, boy, you people are wicked, but you know. Yeah, cool. why are you trying to ruin my phone <laughs> for, Did you ever have that thing with your parents where their mind would go blank when you talk to them when you're older about the beats? No, I didn't do yeah, that. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. do you know what? I don't, even, I don't think it's blank. I think they just can't believe because they've evolved so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. As they get older, they don't want to talk about it. They don't yeah, want to admit yeah, yeah, yeah. it because they're not proud of it. But yeah. at the time, this is all they knew. They didn't yeah. know how to begin to communicate because no one told them yeah. it's okay to speak. No one said it's okay to express. So all mm. they knew was licks yeah. and and just certain like stern so now ways. They've made, now they've passed a law on it, haven't they? They actually have passed yeah, a law you on. Only, you can't smack, but you. I think tap no, or something. No, surely you can yeah. smack as long as you don't bruise. Well, I'm at not, some point, I'm preparing myself to tap. Smack, them, smack them is there. you do yeah. it hard enough, it's gonna it's bruise. Gonna gonna leave a mark. There, you know. And we might have someone out there now. <laughs> yeah. He's going to no, no, no. yeah, You know, no, every kid now who grew up is thinking they've just gone up to their mum and that you can't do nothing. No, yeah, yeah, nothing. Right. But I think that I think that's sad that we've reached the point, and this is my biggest fear of this generation: yeah, is yeah. that, like, back in the day, and I literally spoke about this yesterday, we had like the certain things on site things would happen right amongst yeah, the man yeah. them in the street but don't do your mum jokes are you mad now yeah. you're kidnapping mums now if you're out with your mum you're going to get it regardless yeah. there's, yeah, there's certain yeah. there's certain there's like, no unspoken rules no, 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 I was no, no, saying no. that in the week to someone I said you know what as wild as we was back in the day in Hackney if you saw a man's mum with him you would be like you're lucky with your mum that's it times, yeah. Yeah. so next time I see you it's peak yeah but mum's because the mum was there you wouldn't do nothing You'd but be now no, it's like what S smash over the mum I've got mm. clients where they beat their mum on a daily basis Mad. like standard this is like the new trend now where hitting your mum is now cool what, what I mean trend what you ain't heard about that no that is the new trend to beat your mum and some dads are getting beaten up in the house as well. I did that. Listen, but then it just shows you that the massive and I'm talking the that kids where mums are right scared off, to go home. I remember I went to went mm. to meet this mum. I had to take her to a meeting and I got to the door and on the other side of the door, her son was strangling her on the other side of the door. Why? He's a drug dealer, but he wanted five pounds off his mum and yeah. his mum was trying to leave to go to the meeting with me. His son just strangled her. And I thought at that time, like, this isn't normal. Then I found that it's That's standard. Normal. With these new generation young people, strangling and badding up your mum, like, they they call it G-check. You know, like... G-check, yeah. yeah. Go yeah, G-check your mum, you know. They're G-checking their mum. I'll in be in my grave. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying that is the most evilest thing no. you could do to your mum. And then you know what I realised? Mm -mm. The, the fathers, if they're in the house, they're scared of their sons as well. Because yeah. a lot of them might watch Top Boy or something and then they see their sons evolving into Top Boy day after day. After a while, they're scared to even say but anything. But you're not just that. Also, but but, but yeah. do you know because... Do you know because a lot of men, like by default, even alpha men, they, they have a certain certain yeah. energy about them. So or the older generation of men, they feel like their their stance and their presence is enough for their children yeah. to respect them. So, but when they realise, wait, their children are getting bigger than them, yeah. that's where the fear gets back. Because when you see the loose behaviour, plus the fact that my guy can actually level up to me, can start yeah. to me, I don't blame them for being scared. Mm. Because if you're desensitising amongst your your peers, that you know, B mm. G checking your parent was banter and it's jokes and it's normal. Then why would it did not ever, circulate and become a norm? Did you have that that scenario with your son at any point where he's Try gone to up to you up. and listen? My my thing is this: before it even happened, I'm like, yo, <laughs> don't even. Yeah, think I, about I it. listen, <laughs> like, dad. You, listen, I, ask your family about me. I'm a madman, and the reason why I'm having to do that is Humble. like, listen, I'm running these elections. I'm working. <laughs> But the day you ever you will step out don't play, cause I'll lose everything. Cause 
the thing is, if mm. your son don't fear you to a certain level, mm. you've got a problem. Hundred. And you have to be zero tolerance. Like the minute something, what? Get out of your bed now. To the point where my son's acting out. He's blocking me because <laughs> he can't tell me them gangster things he's telling his mom. Like what? Forget that, man. What? 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 Like what? Say All one right, more time cool. with chess. I'm gonna deal with you <laughs> like a man deals with a man that he's got beef with. I'm rolling on you at six in the morning when you're in bed. Mm. What are you saying now? Mm. Oh, dad. Oh, <laughs> because you have to make them know. <laughs> no, but it's real. No, I will cool. rather be the first man onto you than some before guy. someone real on the road comes onto you. Mm. And it's funny. I had a dad say to me over there, another dad, real guy, but he works now for the council. He's like, you know what, Brennan? I feel to get a van, you know, and grab the you and put him in the van and mash him up and throw him in, in the, like, in w- by yeah, the forest. Yeah. And I said to him, you know what? That sound good, you know. But let me tell you the bad thing with that. You see, if it was our generation, they'll learn. We're not calling the police on mm. our dads. Nice, if yeah. the police stop us and our dad just finished beating us with our uncles in the van, we're like, no, we were going camping, although yeah, I'm bleeding. Yeah, 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 yeah. These new youths, they're like, no, nope, uncle hit me, dad hit me, nice, and, and yeah, furthermore, yeah, they yeah. took my phone as well, and I'm pressing charges. <laughs> so the only are you going to go to jail for trying to go that? extra mile to protect mm. your children you're now going to lose everything and put your other children on a child protection list mm. because you're trying to protect one and i think that is the most heartbreaking thing mm. in this day and age trying to be a parent because you want to be that person that your son fears or your daughter fears because some of these girls as well bring problems up. yeah yeah but at the same time you have to have that balance before you get yourself in trouble mm. And lose everything because mm. it's one thing crossing that line, you could end up on charges. I've had men see their daughters at them festivals where they're dancing in the mm. grass and the daughter's doing balloons and the dad just grips her up. Someone's come over, what are you doing to this girl? But the little girl's acting like it's not her dad. Nah. And the police arrested the dad. So what you, can I just ask you, <sighs> like, what do you think the problem is? I what is why is this generation gone completely left in comparison? Because I'm fearing for my the own school. child. I, th- I blame the school because if you look at it, a lot of these young people lose their way the minute they start secondary school. Towards the end of primary school, secondary school, you start to see the change in your children that starts to worry you. But where is it in the school? I think that the environment of being the environment together, d- together. So, it so not, not the teachers. School. You're not referring because no, I think no. teachers the, are overworked. To be s- fair, some of the teachers are the problem as well because some of them are like, "Oh, are you okay? When you go home, no one's talking to you like that. Mm. Don't do that. Don't worry. It's not your fault." So mm. when they come home now, you say something to them. They're like, "I don't like the tone you're talking to me." And, because you're talking in your traditional tone. I, Everything's politically there. correct here now. So you yeah. have to now lower your tone to a mm. B minus to communicate with your own children. Like, are you okay? And you're like, wait a minute, I can't do this, man. This is long. Because <laughs> you are now <laughs> feeling talk. uncomfortable. Oh, you're making me feel sad. All I've told you is to wash the dishes. <laughs> Or pick up your clothes off the floor. I'm yeah. not sure how I feel about this. But now it's like you need a guidebook from the school mm. of how to talk to your own children. And if they go to the school and say, oh, oh dad and mum's being really aggressive with me at school. Now nah, there's a Just report speak, guiding yeah, on thought, you. Yeah, yeah. But I, I feel like there's, I feel like talk to them. I feel like the teachers are a bit raggo though. I feel like some of them can just be straight with the kids and they can have My that teacher. dialogue, especially yeah. secondary school. Primary school, everything's like, yeah, you yeah. know, they, they, they're the, to be the shelter. It depends really. on what school. Yeah. When I went to school, we had a, a basketball teacher called Joe White, rest his soul. Mm. And the guy was like a bad man. Like mm. He was a legendary basketball player. And he would be like, what, you don't think you're gangsters? Three o'clock, all of you come down here. Lock the gym, fight, go on, no weapons. And that's when you saw that most people didn't want to fight. They all talk. Yeah? yeah, and then we had another mentor called Sterling, he's still alive. And he'll be like, you man are not real. Mm. If you're real, just go around the back of the school. And do your thing. And do your anybody, thing. But no one ain't doing that and no then more. shake hands after. Yeah. And then because he's put us on the spot like that, you learn who's really who. And it's those sort of men that you respect that they went above and beyond their job. Mm. 
even me, the man took me. Uh, I don't know if you remember. They had a London Towers basketball team back in the day. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a, and um, every Saturday, I used to have to go there with a little radio and play the music from a tape cassette and then rewind it. Tell us the age about telling yeah. us your age. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Pull up. One second, yeah. one second, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, I think, it, yeah. yeah, and, yeah and yeah, then yeah. rewind it again and play it again when they go well, for the break. Some plays the podcast now. But, yeah. but the yeah. thing yeah. is, I didn't have a choice to go because my mom was like, Saturday, 12 o'clock, mm. gone. It was like, who does this man think he's talking to? But it was like, all right, cool, I have to. Mm. And it's that sort of respect you've got for certain people, mm-hmm. why you didn't end up dead or, or you didn't end up killing someone because there was that person there. And I think every school needs them sort of teachers where the parents are like, if you want to swear at them in a room, do your thing. But they're yeah. like a second parent. Yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. like they, they understand teachers, it. It's some, with love. Yeah, you have to sign some something. Teachers. Like, if you want to tell them... Rrr. I gave you permission to break yeah. up I my give, child. Yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what, though? It's, it's, yeah, and that it's very good. And it goes to like last point I wanted to have because I think we've got about 10 minutes yeah, left. Yeah, that's cool. So... Obviously, where we're talking about, obviously, how mad it is uh, for people, kids to grow up now specifically. Yeah. Now, with so much going on, from, like, I say, our point of views of people who are not involved in politics, maybe like yeah. you are, um, we, it's, I'm finding it hard to see what how much is being done. Mm. Because all I'm seeing at the moment in the news is the stop and search is being relaxed no no yeah but here's the thing yeah mm. so where where we we can make it changes when they have these meetings every wednesday in house of commons mm. instead of them talking about the issues and i appreciate they have a lot to talk about yeah. every week at the moment they're, all they're arguing about is this report that's come out and Party boris gate. is breaking yeah, uh, restrictions but that's all that's been going on for like so i'm thinking three weeks three weeks gone yeah or two weeks gone they've been talking about this consistently it's probably mm. taken up most of their time in those two three weeks yeah okay i know you've got to speak about it but realistically have we got to argue of it for three weeks or is there other stuff that okay so we're either going to make a decision what are we going to do with this we haven't come up we'll come back to that what else are we going to bring up in this meeting you've got all the politicians there because other, other pressing issues. Other pressing issues. But, but it, you know what it is it comes back down to understanding again mm. the politics and the politics in the politics. If you're from an area or constituency, it's mm-hmm. called, and you've voted in an MP, it's for you to apply pressure without laying up on your MP, if they're conservative, to get rid of Boris Johnson. And this is how you change the game. Everyone has the power to p- apply pressure to their local MPs. There's also something called uh, council questions. So before the council meeting, they have a council meeting, I think it's once every month or once every two months, where you could actually go and sit in the audience uh-huh. and listen yourself in your local for, local area. Mm. But before that, you've got the opportunity su- to submit questions to your MP and councillors, mm. and, and they have to send you back a response. If you don't like the response, then you could then lobby them, start a petition, get the newspapers involved. So... It's about people understanding the power they have. If your MP believes that yeah. they're not going to get voted in at the next election and you start going on social media calling out your MP, hundreds of you standing outside your MP's office, mm. that MP will go in the House of Commons and do what you tell them to do. But do you not feel like, uh, from an MP perspective and a local MP perspective, they're overworked in the sense of everyone's got complaints yeah. and now it's harder. So before, I felt like there was more of a voice where MPs really want to do a lot. Yeah. And now that like, they can't handle every, I'll talk from a housing perspective, they can't handle every single disrepair case. Yeah. They can't handle every single antisocial behaviour case. Whereas before, it's a lot of work. there was a lot more presence. Yeah. Because it is a lot of work. Even for the councillors, mm. the volume of work you you have to take on for the amount of money you get paid, we one thing we have to commend them. So we, I pay respect to all MPs and councillors because the job's not as straightforward as people think. You get people talking about immigration, housing, their school, the police, anything in the borough that even your neighbours harassing you write to the MP about. You understand? So then you, if you don't answer them in time, they then complain about mm. you. So imagine about parking, the parking spaces. Parking spaces. <laughs> everything. The, the dustbin. And the not just foxes. that, but that, that yeah. person's problem is like everything to them. So the yeah. old lady who can't park outside her house because she's too elderly to walk, she will press that yes. point. But there's yeah. another person who's complaining about being sexually harassed by yeah. their neighbour, but they can't get decanted somewhere else. Yeah. So it's like, which important, which point which is more pressing? Is, but then this is what I'm saying. 
if you come together as a community mm. within a community space and agree on certain points and then press on them which is the most burning points then you get things done do you think mm. in london and i'm talking about break up the boroughs yeah mm -hmm. so the boroughs in london for example i hear what you're saying maybe that needs <laughs> to happen like for example my a lot of my family have grown up in a town like a countryside it's quite far yeah listen it's the kind of town i can walk down the road at four in the morning mm. see someone and go how you doing you're right and walk off it's like that there's no crime there whatsoever but it's a quiet like yeah. it's a town but everyone is friendly you can walk there at five in the morning on your own and you're yeah. safe that's like mm. one of them places but they all one thing they do they all have like for example they set up a chat and it's got like it's got about 10 11 000 people in it it's, a, it's not a small town mm. uh and they're all on the chat and they all put their stuff in on the bulbra chat and they all help each other like oh looking for looking for a plumber for this then they'll tag loads of plumbers from the local area that area mm. or need help with uh this and like what i'm saying what i'm trying to get at is is i think you're right in the sense of i don't think there's that support network in the boroughs maybe we expect the mps to do everything yeah. but and also because we lost a sense of community the no, community no, no, that we used the, to yeah. have is yeah. gone so your your area that you're mentioning there's a sense of community yeah. where it's like we've got each other we'll find a solution you ran out of cow pork because of covid don't worry my guy yeah, over there's yeah, got a pharmacy yeah, 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 yeah. we'll source it for you yeah. whereas but then we live them, in london them, we don't even say hello to our neighbors them, no them more. communities yeah, are the yeah. best thriving a hundred percent but they've been destroyed yeah. mm. and when i was growing up there weren't no knife crime on my estate. Why? Because everyone knew everyone. Even if you had a fight, they're bringing you to your house. That's it. That's punch punch my old son. school. Yeah, and that, that's old school. When I go back yeah. there, nah, it's like, I don't know anyone. Either they're dead or they've been shipped out or something. So <sighs> I think that's where the troubles come in. The smashing up of these communities, displacing of the family and, and mm. also making the young people believe that they could get away with it. Look at this, a young person's on bail for three machetes. So if I'm on bail for one, I think I've still got two more goals to go. Mm. So we also have so to in look a presidency. at- presidency. Yeah, we are also have to look at what the criminal justice system is pumping into these young people. And they've got a new thing now, I know we're on time, called uh, uh, community orders, yeah? Mm. and with these community orders they can ban you from certain areas so the police will put you on a community order mm. and then ban you and then they've now got the other one which they're calling a gold ticket to get out of jail free card i don't know if you've heard about it modern day slavery act yeah nrm so it's a national referral mechanism it was originally came in to help the vietnamese people mm. that were being caught in the cannabis factory so they weren't criminalized now, if you're a young person being caught with drugs, knives, or whatever, your family or your lawyer can ask for you to get a uh, NRM. That then gets you off all the cases. So you could, I don't know. But then what happens when, as, what, in exchange of what though? Nothing. It, they just say, well, John gave me the knife and the drugs and I don't know where John lives. And then because you're under 18, you get off all the cases. It happens mm. every oh, single day in the okay, court. Okay. So, so the issue is where we're still getting these kids who have these issues back on the streets. Yes. And no and actual... Nothing's, no work's gone into them. No because prevention. The cases, as soon as they finish yeah, the case, that's and I, it. And I think yeah, that's yeah. one of the biggest problems that we've got in the community today. If a young person goes to court and gets off a case, still offer them support. There's no support for them. So unless you're charged with a crime, you don't get any support. And so. that's the unfortunate thing because some of these kids aren't criminals. Yeah. They're, in un they're in unfortunate circumstances. They either have a criminal record and now they're put in a situation that yeah. they're unfamiliar and no intentions to get to. But th I'd rather, uh, some people won't agree, but I'd rather some people not have criminal records and be placed into some su support. required support, yeah. whether yeah. it's therapy, whether it's whatever, anger management, whether it's whatever it is that we've got to do. Because not yeah. some, of these, some of these kids that became bigger criminals never ever were going to be that had they just yeah. been given that right support and mm -hmm. final point for all the massive drug dealers out there and criminals help them find an alternative so they could exit once they can exit safely they'll stop polluting the young people and pumping the drugs and the guns in the community so not that we're promoting drug dealers but i'm saying all the criminals that are out there that want to go off into the sun and the sea and live happily ever after set up some sort of transition scheme where they could go away because a lot of these older guys if they leave these estates 
and show the young people, listen, crime don't pay. The young people stop committing crime. Yes, yeah? some people can't leave the communities they've grown up in, and they're the same ones that the young people grow up wanting to aspire to be. Facts. Yeah, facts. I want. I want to challenge that, but I won't. No. We don't have time. Nah, <laughs> you forgot. Yeah, we'll we challenge. We'll challenge behind the scenes. Yeah, right. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching. Anyway, do you want to shout your socials out? Where can people find you yeah, as well? I'm on all social media sites. I'm on. Uh, only one I don't do is Snapchat because it's too intrusive. <laughs> but I'm on TikTok now. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, and I'm on Twitter as well. So yeah. just type my name in Gwenton. I'm the only one in the country. Come on. <laughs> he unique. Up. Yeah, unique. <laughs> yeah, but I said thanks for having me on your platform. No, nah, I appreciate it. It's been actually yeah. good. There's a lot of stuff I learned today that I didn't know. I don't know about you two. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, it's no, been an insightful like conversation. Cer- certain things that modern slavery day act yeah, thing at the end was very interesting. There's a lot of things that we're we're unaware of. Like, yeah, there's you don't know until you speak to somebody yeah. who's yeah. very True. educated in it. But yeah, um, but yeah, this yeah. Thanks for watching. Anyway, peace. Bye. Cool. Come